let's rotoscope in Blender. This is Blender 4.0. Open up Blender, click on 2D animation. We're greeted with this screen. Edit, preferences, input. Make sure you have emulate three button mouse selected. Press Option, Control, mouse click to zoom out a little bit. Then Option, Shift, mouse click, and drag to reposition this. You can go to the bottom right here, move it up so we can see our timeline. If you have a tablet, make sure you've installed the driver. I'm using the Huion. H610 Pro, and I've gone to the Huion.com website to download the driver for the Mac operating system. The newest release is September 2023. Download, install, open a blender, ready to go. All right, this is, I'm moving this with the mouse. And that's great. Command Z to undo. But then when I have the tablet, it's got pressure sensitivity all right command z to undo go over here to strength bump it up all the way to one and now we've got even more power see because now it goes from zero to more 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 to 100 percent the color since it's at one okay command z first thing we want to do is go up here to draw mode, click that and go to object mode, shift A to add reference. I'm gonna look for the reference I have. All right. And this is what we're gonna, what I will be using. Okay, the video I have is smaller than my workspace. I press S, drag, to the size, or maybe even slightly larger, of my workspace. Come over here, change the frame rate to custom. I'll be working with 12 frames per second. And I want, so this is the clip. I'll press space or play. Spacebar or this right here, this little symbol is to play the animation or the video reference. And that's what I've got. Nice. All right, so at 105 is when I want the reference to end. So I can come down here, frame range, start at frame one, end at 105. I can zoom in to my timeline by clicking on this little ball, this little circle, scrolling over. So the output will be inside this folder. And I'm actually going to make another folder for that. Title PNGs. There we go. And select that folder. And we'll title it, not just that's the folder. Everything here is looking good. All right. So now this is the empty. We'll title that video reference. And the stroke is the layer that's going to have our drawing. Going back to the video reference, Clicking on the data tab, selecting opacity, we can lower this a little bit. Not too much, let's just make it 0.9. Let's go back to the stroke and back to draw mode. All right, now we're ready. We make sure we're on frame one by pressing this. In case we're over here, go back to the beginning, frame one. And we start to draw. Pressing F, 
And moving the mouse, you can make a bigger stroke. Pressing Shift F, you can change the opacity. I'll put it back to 100%. The pen stroke, I want it to be not too big. I can go over here, select what kind of stroke I want. Maybe I'll do airbrush, I think I'm gonna do pencil. I feel good about that. Over here, I got eraser. The strength, you can change that up there or right here with Shift F. Delete the whole thing. Erase the whole thing. All right, back to pen, and pencil. Change the size. So frame one. I'm drawing. You can come over here to the side, click off, the video reference, pressing that little I, and that's for the strokes. If you're in video reference, and then you go back to stroke, maybe you don't see what's happening out there, just go back to video, uh, video reference and click stroke again. Sometimes uh, it glitches up a little bit, but it'll come back. All right, so that's frame one. You can move, click and drag over to frame two, or press the forward key, back key to go back, forward key to go forward, and press with the cursor down here in the timeline, press I, and insert keyframes in all channels. So now you can go back and do the next one. And you can see the previous keyframe, and I'll talk about that in a second. That's because we have onion skin set up. But when I'm scrolling like this, it just shows the one I'm currently on. If you don't want onion skin, which isn't really necessary right now since we're rotoscoping and we are using the video reference as a reference, you can just click it off. We can click this one off, that's for fills, which we're not doing right now. But the lines, that's what we're doing. Okay, click that off. There might come a time when you will need the onion skin even while rotoscoping because you want to know what's happening before or after in your rotoscope. For example, right here, turn off the video reference, and we're seeing just the frame we're on, but then now we see what we did earlier. And here, onion skinning, we have options. How many keyframes before, how many keyframes after. The opacity, you can change the opacity, make it a little lighter. So we have frame one, frame two, we'll move to frame three, turn on the video reference again, but remember, press I, click all channels, I'll turn off onion skin, and continue. Next frame, I, all channels, do it again. It's important to keep in mind that we're using the video reference as a reference and we can stick to what we see or start making changes, exaggerating, adding, subtracting. There's a lot of artistic choices we have to make while rotoscoping. I'm not drawing every single thing I'm seeing in this reference. I'm only drawing the things I want to draw. So this is what I have so far. Later on, there's going to be more. All of this. And I will draw all of that. I will be moving frame by frame and adding keyframes. You can skip a few frames you don't have to do every single frame. See how you're feeling about the way the animation is going. Maybe you want to 
skip ahead a few frames, you could do every other frame, but we have the frame rate at 12 frames per second, that's 12 drawings a second if you're drawing on every frame. You could maybe do every other frame and go back and see how you like the progress, maybe add some in between frames. All right, so I kept drawing and skipped ahead and I'll show you the progress so far. I'll do it with the reference on. If you happen to move your reference file and Blender cannot find it, you go to File, External Data, Find Missing Files, click on the one that it is. I changed the name, so... Alright. There we go. I changed the, the, the location and the name, so that's why that took a moment. Okay, so we found the file. Seeing how it's looking. Looks good. So, I'm going to do more. That's what I have so far. I'm feeling good about it. And I will export it. So, we'll click the I in empty so it does not appear. Look at it again. Looks great. I'll leave it at 105 frames, even though there's more I want to do, and right now it's blank. That's all right. Go to the beginning. Go to the output tab. Make sure everything looks good. I reset it. Okay. I have my output. PNGs. Render animation. Okay, once the rendering is done, you've gone into the last frame. In my case, it was 105. Click off, save, command S, file, new, video editing. All right, we're greeted with this new set of windows, workspaces, add, image, sequence, find where all those PNGs are. If they're in some other order, like this, because it's set to size, click on name. You want them in order. Select all. Add image strip. Here we go. Press space, and it's looking great. Make sure the dimensions are correct, the frame rate. I'll set it to 12, which is what I had. And now it looks like what I wanted. Go down, let's see. This, the frame range starts at 1, but it ends at 105. The output, I'll set it to where I had it here. I'll title it Sidewalk Surfing. Encoding. MPEG-4. Video codec at H.264. Output quality, perceptually lossless. Encoding speed, good. We don't have audio, we can leave that. And we're ready to go. So render, animation. When it gets to 105, we're done. Open up the file. Great, we did it. This part is blank because I will continue to do more, but that's the project. Nice job.